Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little sucker right here. It's the Elzetta Bones flashlights. This is a new model, I think. They released it in like the middle of 2016. I've had this one in for months now. I've been using it on a couple rifles and also just been doing some daily carry type use with it. And uh, what we're gonna do today is first off, step outside and compare the beam pattern to a couple different lights out there so you guys can get an idea of what you're actually gonna see when you use the light in low light situations. After that, we're gonna get into all the details of it and uh, some of the differences in this and the Bravo series of lights. Of course, the big one that many of you may have heard about is that this now takes 18650 rechargeable batteries. So we'll show you that a little bit later on after we go outside and check out the beam pattern. As you guys are looking at it, the fence is about 30 feet away from the camera. And you can see the actual beam pattern here of the bones. It's got a hot spot and it's got a good balance of uh, throw and uh, spill. So you can definitely still see, as you look at it over to the right of your screen, some illumination there on the fence, but the hotspot of course is down here at the end of it. So that's what that looks like. Here we have the pattern of a Surefire IntelliBeam. You can see it's got a tighter hotspot and uh, definitely has sort of an edge on it. And that's due to the uh, difference here with the Elzetta having the acrylic lens versus the standard lens here on the Surefire. So you guys can see kind of how they stack up. The Surefire here on your right is a little bit whiter light and the left here is a little bit more natural. So that's how those two beams compare. And here we have the Enforce WMLX. You can see the beam pattern of that one. And again, we're gonna put that down and take a look here at the bones. Definitely a little bit more balanced there on the edges, but uh, it sort of depends what you're looking for. The WMLX is a good light I've reviewed positively and uh, the bones here just a little bit different, but they're all really high output lights for sure. Um, and you're gonna be able to see what you're looking at either way. Taking a close up look at the light, we'll start out here on the bezel and note that it is crenellated. So that way, um, if you had to use it as a weapon, you could, you can impart some striking force and it would be a good attitude adjuster for that. Um, however, it's not sharp, so that way it's not gonna tear up your pockets or anything like that if you keep it in your pocket as an EDC type of light. We can remove the uh, bezel to take out the acrylic lens. Flood lenses made by Elzetta do fit in this light. So that is one of the modular features that is retained from the standard line. So you can see fully acrylic lens, very durable stuff. That's one of the reasons that you can bang this thing with a hammer and use it as a hammer rather and not have to worry about it. You'll also note that everything is O-ring sealed and properly lubricated. Keep on moving down. And one thing that you do lose for modularity uh, versus the Bravo series or Alpha series is that your head does not come off. So here's my Elzetta Bravo, and you can see there the head. You can actually spin that off on the bones. You can't. Uh, a few other things I guess we should just mention while we're going over it is that the sort of serrations built into the grip of the, of the uh, Bravo is a little bit more intricate and has finer checkering on there. The bones is a little bit coarser and of course doesn't have the grooves cut into it. However, just from a feel perspective, I like the coarse um, checkering on there. It gives you a very positive grip and it's still done very well. Um, the color of course is different, but both are made, or rather are both are uh, type three hard anodized. It's just a little bit different process that saves a little bit of money with the bones making it gray. There's only one tail cap option available with the Elzetta Bones light and that is the constant on. So uh, basically when you click it all the way down, it stays constant on. However, you do have the option for momentary by just pushing a little bit and holding. And one thing that's really nice about the Elzetta is that the switch is almost imperceivable in terms of audible signal. So I don't think you guys can probably even hear that. It's barely, barely audible in person. So to check out the batteries or change the batteries, screw this tail cap off. And again, you'll note O-ring and properly lubricated. We've been using the CR123 batteries that do come with it. But one of the big features, of course, that everybody's talking about is the fact that you can drop the 18650 batteries in there and it will work. And that is one big difference, uh, again, versus the, um, the Bravo series. So you can see there, it does work just fine with those. But for defensive purposes, again, as I've said in just about every video, I recommend sticking with the CR123s because um, they're just gonna be a little bit more dependable. And of course, they'll let you know when they're going uh, 
going to run out versus this year or versus 18650 that will not we hit most of the high points, but one thing I neglected to mention was that uh, all of those lights have fully potted electronics, including the Bones model. So for those unfamiliar with it, what it basically means, or a good analogy I guess you could say is, think about when you're pouring a foundation of concrete, right? They put the rebar up, pour the concrete in, concrete hardens, and then the strength of the rebar and the strength of the concrete are both increased because of each other's presence, right? So the similar thing works with the uh, electronics that are in here. Basically, they put all the electronics in place, then pour in a resin over it, the resin hardens, and then the electronics can't move, so that way impact can't break the electronic signal and circuit in there. So uh, you guys have probably seen LZ lights being dropped out of helicopters on the concrete, they work fine. Fired on 50 cal machine guns, they work fine. Uh, people hammering nails in with them, they work fine. LZs are simply some of the, if not the, I would probably say the most durable and reliable flashlight on the planet, but that is not cheap. Another thing that's not cheap is that they're made in America by Americans. Uh, that's also not cheap. So uh, this one, they tried to drive the price down a little bit. I think they reduced the MSRP over the Bravo by like 50 bucks. And uh, it's still a very good light. And I checked around online and I think I was seeing it for like $175 or something like that. So not cheap, not at all. But if you want a light that you can depend on, LZs are at the top of that list. Uh, two of my home defense rifles have LZ lights on them. So I absolutely do believe in them and trust them uh, with the lives of my family. So that's about as good of an endorsement as you could get, I suppose. But if you guys have any questions about this light that we didn't cover in the video, by all means, you can post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And we hope to see you in the next video.